Hello everyone! Today, I'd like to show you my stunning variegated beauties and share some insights and experiences about Hoya diseases and pests. So, here are my Hoya Macrophylla plants. First is the Hoya Macrophylla Pot of Gold. It's a gorgeous Hoya, but it can be a bit finicky for me. This is one of my specimens, and it doesn't grow quickly. Currently, I'm conducting an experiment by growing it on a windowsill without artificial lighting. I want to see how it adapts there, because there isn't much space on my shelf. And I'd like my mature Hoyas to grow under natural lighting. With sufficient lighting, this variety develops a red center on its young leaves. Let's see how it reacts to this lighting experiment. The second beauty is Hoya Macrophylla Alba Marginata. It grows beautifully under natural lighting, and it's quite happy. On its young leaves, there's a red border, making it an attractive variety with large leaves and veins. I feel like it grows faster than Macrophylla Pot of Gold. The third Hoya is the Hoya Macrophylla with unique variegation known as Hoya Macrophylla Bowie Burr. It displays variegation with two salad colored stripes along the leaf center. The more light it gets, the brighter these stripes become, turning more yellowish. There's also a splash of variegation. I used to have a larger specimen, but I took cuttings to have multiple plants. I really love this variety. It's called Hoya. Akuta, or Hoya, Bernicellata. One is variegated, and the other is Hoya Alba Marginata. I've had the Hoya Verticillata variegated for quite some time. It grows quite rapidly and looks very striking. It can have large leaves. I've potted another cutting so it will have even bigger leaves. This one grows under a lamp, but not in bright light. It even has some tan color, not very bright, but overall, it's a fantastic Hoya. As for the Hoya Acuta Albo Marginata, it's growing oddly for me. I don't know if it's just me, as Hoya Acuta is generally common and affordable, and it grows well for everyone else. Mine, however, grows very slowly. Now, let me show you the next Hoyas. These variegated beauties are Hoyas Kentiana. There's the Hoya Kentiana Variegated and the Hoya Kentiana Alba Marginata Lori Lin. I've had both of these for a long time since the beginning of my passion for Hoyas. They grow at a moderate pace, not too fast, but not too slow either. They develop a beautiful tan under weak light and without natural sunlight, although they still get enough light. They are absolutely charming. Here's a tiny Hoya that I recently purchased, and despite its size, these two leaves have grown quite quickly. I believe it will become a beauty in no time. Currently, sellers from the Netherlands offer a Hoya called Hoya Wayeti Tricolor, which closely resembles the Hoya Kentiana Variegated. I can't say if they are the same variety or not since I don't have the tricolor one, but I do have the Hoya Wayeti with green leaves, and they look different from the Kentiana. As for the names and whether they are the same or different varieties, I can't say for sure. Nevertheless, they are all gorgeous Hoyas. And this little one is adorable as well. Alright, now let me show you the next pair. I've planted these two variegated Hoyas together. They are Bella Alba Marginata and Bella Louis Bois. The latter already has a peduncle. This one is Bella Louis Bois. I think rooting and growth are easier with this one compared to the other. I've had Bella Alba Marginata for quite some time, and initially it didn't want to grow. I had to root it multiple times. Here are a few cuttings. But this particular cutting rooted successfully on the first attempt and began to grow. Now it's covered with young leaves. Once it grows into a lush bush, I'll repot it into a larger pot and it will look beautiful. Hopefully, both of them will bloom together. These small leaved Hoyas take up little space and will grow beautifully in hanging planters. Now, 
I'll show you a couple more variegated Hoyas. Hoya Kinijiana Nuggets and Hoya Kinijiana Variegated. Hoya Kinijiana Variegated has a white border along the leaf's edge, which is not very noticeable on young leaves. However, the adult leaves become brighter and the white border becomes much more pronounced. I've wanted such a beauty for a long time. Its leaves will be significantly larger. I bought one, and then I saw another. They are quite rare here, for some reason. I can't say yet how fast they grow, but these leaves grew in about a couple of months. I think they will look beautiful. The leaves remind me a little of ficus, but they are denser. I used to think they would be exactly like ficus, but it turns out they have a denser texture. They will look very striking when they mature. I've seen how mature plants look. Okay, there are two more Hoyas I want to show you. This is Hoya Incrasata Eclipse. There's also one similar to it, called Hoya Incrasata Moon Shadow, but it has variegation in the center. I had this variety before, but the cutting was sick from the start, and despite all my efforts to save it, it didn't work out. So, I had to discard it. But I have a new cutting of Hoya Moon Shadow coming soon through a trade, and I'll show it to you later. In my opinion, Hoya Incrasata Eclipse grows quite fast. Now, let me show you one more variegated Hoya that I want to share. It's Hoya Pachiclara Albomarginata. I just received it. I never paid much attention to this Hoya variety before, but when I saw this one with the pink border, I really liked it. So, I arranged a trade and got it for myself. In my view, this Hoya looks very similar to a Peperonia. So, those are all the beauties I wanted to show you today. Now, let me briefly talk about Hoya diseases and pests. Based on what I know, dealing with pests is relatively straightforward. The same pests that can attack our indoor plants can also attack Hoyas. The key is to be prepared and know how to combat them. Sometimes, I've come across information where people don't know how to handle pests properly. But that's more for beginners. So, we have insect pests and mites. For insects, we use certain insecticides, and for mites, we use others. There are some combined ones, but there aren't many, and one I know is actelic. It has a very unpleasant smell and is generally not recommended for use in indoor conditions. As for insect pests, we deal with mealybugs, whiteflies, thrips, scale insects, and others that I might have forgotten. In general, all kinds of insects, crawling and flying, how do we combat them? We use systemic insecticides. Or contact ones. I prefer systemic ones. Currently, I have one. The active ingredient is thiamethoxin. It's a systemic insecticide applied by watering the plants, and then the plant absorbs the substance, becoming toxic to insects, causing them to die. Additionally, it won't hurt to treat plants with a soapy solution. For example, if we notice any pests, to manually eliminate as many individuals as possible. Then we simply water the insecticide according to the instructions. If you decide to use a contact insecticide, you must spray it, and not just once. However, when dealing with various mites on plants, insecticides won't help. Mites are arachnids, so we need acaricides. It's better to choose one that already states it acts on all stages of mite development. There are different kinds of mites. Spider mites, the most common ones, citrus mites, soil mites, and many, many, many more. 
but all of them can be dealt with using products known as acaricides. Currently, I have sun mite, for example. I haven't found any mites on the Hoyas, but I presume they might appear on thin-leaved varieties. Plants are sprayed several times with this product. Usually, everything is written on the packaging. It seems quite clear. And one more thing. Pests are unpleasant creatures that don't always reveal themselves immediately. That's why we don't always notice them right away. When you have a large collection, I believe it's better to periodically treat the plants with bio preparations as a preventive measure. For instance, I plan to do this once every six months using insecticides against pests. If any pest manages to get inside and hide, especially in the fall when conditions are unfavorable for them, they might hide until spring and surprise us. Recently, in a Hoya group, a well-known collector showcased her beautiful and expensive plant, but attentive people noticed mealybugs on it, and she didn't even know they had settled there. Such neglect led to a problem, and it required immediate action. We need to be prepared and know how to deal with these situations. Now let's talk about plant diseases. I believe many have seen dots or growths on the reverse side of the leaves. This is the plant's signal of overwatering and overcooling. It's not contagious or dangerous. If you notice and fix the problem right away, new leaves will be beautiful and everything will be fine. Old leaves will remain the same, but you can trim them, though I don't usually do that. The most demanding variety in this regard, for me, is Hoya Michelle. It instantly reacts to overwatering or temperature drops and black spots appear on its leaves. All this indicates that it's cold, uncomfortable, and not doing well. We must try to rectify the situation immediately. It's essential to maintain the optimal conditions for Hoyas. Most varieties are comfortable at temperatures between 20-25 degrees Celsius. Of course, many Hoyas can tolerate higher or lower temperatures, but some start to suffer and they show it on their leaves. If we can't quickly fix factors like temperature and watering or we don't notice them, fungal diseases can develop on the plants. In such cases, fungicides help us. I'll show you the one I recently purchased. The active ingredient is penconazole. I prefer systemic fungicides like insecticides which provide long-lasting protection. The package indicates what it acts against. For disease prevention, it's good to use bio-preparations based on, for example, Trichoderma or Bacillus subtilis. These preparations are also available. However, it's essential to understand that bio-preparations can be difficult to test for the viability of spores. Therefore, choose reputable manufacturers. To sum up, Hoyas can be susceptible to fungal diseases due to prolonged improper care, exposure to low or very high temperatures, and increased humidity. Also, fungal diseases can spread between plants through insect pests, which we don't always notice immediately. I think I've covered everything. One more thing. There are various plant protection products sold in stores that do not have their composition indicated. I don't buy such products because I don't understand what's inside. The same goes for fertilizers. It's important to know what we are spraying or watering our plants with. For Hoyas, and indeed for other plants, the most crucial elements are warmth, light, timely watering, and fertilization. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next video.